Hey y'all, this is Jamie with Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby, presented by Ashley. Yes, and on today's episode, we have the amazing Melissa Joan Hart and her co-host on her podcast, Amanda Lee. And um, they're amazing. We talked about Sabrina and Clarissa and their podcast called What Women Binge. Um, And it's a really good one. But we're also at the 1230 Club, if you guys are watching um, on the video version. And it's beautiful here. And we're thankful they let us um, come in. So we hope you enjoy today's episode. start at the beginning and since you guys have a podcast named what women binge which is what jamie and abby binged for the last (laughs) four days and it's amazing we kind of want to start with like your friendship and how that started um i think that's appropriate right yeah Yeah. (laughs) well um random thursday afternoon melissa showed up in my kitchen (laughs) oh i love my son invited himself to her house (laughs) and i had to go pick him up (laughs) That's how it all started. Yeah. And you know those play dates where like the kids won't leave, so you end up just sitting with the moms in the yeah. in the kitchen and we became fast friends. Like really it, fast. Talked for like over an hour and then I was like, Oh, I think I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, it was all my son's doing, just of like bullying himself into her like car, really. He like, didn't take bully me home. He was so <laughs> sweet. Take he me asked. home from school. <laughs> <laughs> and, and kudos to our kids' school for not telling me how to get in touch with his parents because he was like, Just call my mom. I was like, Cool. I don't know your mom. Yeah. <laughs> Did you not know until she showed up at So I found kitchen? out the, like the day before. So I asked around. I was like, I need Tucker's mom's number. And they're like, uh, <laughs> you don't know. And I was like, <laughs> what am I missing? No. <laughs> they're like, ah, Tucker's mom's Melissa Joan Hart. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. That's so, funny. Yeah. That's and yeah, then. Funny. So well, I was glad. I was glad to know they were protecting me. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, they were. They were great. <laughs> Thank you not for that the it, security. Not that we need it, but at the same time, like, yeah, it, yeah, it was. Uh it was funny that the story about her trying to get my number. <laughs> yeah. Harsh. And then you ended up calling Mark, right? I texted whatever random number was in the school directory. There was no, it was just like the kids' names, you uh-huh. know, because yeah. they, they do that. And so I was like, this could be a house number. This could be an assistant. This could be, <laughs> I don't know. So I just texted it hoping someone would see it. It's and Mark, my the worst communicator in our family. Oh, and yeah. that's your yeah. husband, correct? Yes, yeah. Okay. He's, and he is just like. Not the person you want to call if you need anything. <laughs> so he's just like not an emergency. If you don't contact. ask him a question, he doesn't respond. Yeah, okay. he won't respond. Gotcha. Text. I'll, I'll oftentimes be like, "Did you get my seven texts that I sent you?" And he's yeah. like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "But you didn't respond." And he's like, "Well, you didn't ask a question." Oh, yeah, gosh, that's funny. <laughs> Give one word <laughs> answers. It's hilarious. I learned this very early on in our relationship. Yeah, yeah. yes, you did. So, so, how many years ago yeah. was that? This two just, two years ago. Yeah. Is we that when exactly you moved? Two years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, like like two and a little, a little bit. But yeah, th- I mean, this is our third school year here, but we moved in the middle of 2020. Okay. And okay. So yeah, we're we're new to Nashville, although right it's in really the middle of COVID. <laughs> right in the middle of COVID, oh, and geez. that's sort of the reason, sort of. Um, we were well. I was. I have a very complicated past. <laughs> 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 like, where are you from? I'm like, I can't answer that. Um, born in New York. Lived in L.A. from in my 20s, met Mark, had two kids, um, moved to Connecticut. Mm-hmm. But actually, we looked at Nashville in, like, 2009 when we were trying to find a place to leave L.A. and go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We just wanted to raise the kids in a smaller community. Yeah. And we came to Nashville, and Mark wanted to be here, but all we really did was go to Titans games. So I was like, I don't feel like <laughs> I know the town very well. <laughs> not really sure where I want to live, you know. So I was like, it's not downtown, so, you know, where am I going? But we ended up in Connecticut. We were there about 10 years. Then we moved to Lake Tahoe for two years. And then from Tahoe, we went back to Connecticut for a few months before we made the jump here. So oh, wow. we came here, yeah, mid twenty end of 2020. Do you see yourself staying? Do you like well, it? Well, we made a commitment to 10 years. Okay. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's so a long time. Well, because that's when the kids were out of high school. Yeah, oh. I get so that. So it was sort of like we've moved them around a lot. Yes. We have to hold, st- like we have yes. to settle down. And so we made that commitment. So it's sort of when people are like, do you love it? I'm like, I don't really think about it like. Do I love it or do I hate yeah. it? Like, I, there's nothing, there's like, it just, we're here. And, yeah. and I and I dig in and I, I bloom where I'm planted and like made great friends. That's and awesome. my kids have made great friends and we like the school that they're at and we like our town. And um, so, I mean, we love our house. So we're, we're, we're good. She's planted. Good. I'm not letting I'm her planted. go anyway. Uh, no, good I know. for you. Ten years really. sounds great, <laughs> but it'll, I mean, 
<laughs> it's just a starting yeah. point. But then we have our but then we have our widow plan, so we're good. Oh, well, sorry, I call yeah. it my, my widow plan. So let me tell y'all, only because everything you're saying it relates to me so much. Listening to y'all and getting to know y'all through your podcast, your very first podcast. <laughs> It's very similar to two of us. Like, you and I are the same age. Y'all two are the same age. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kids, we have kids the same age. I have a junior and an eighth grader. Oh, okay. And it just, everything is relatable. And with you moving, now we're at the point, because we've moved everywhere, we're at the point, I'm like, I I don't want to move until the kids graduate. Like, it just, this is a hard age. Mm -hmm. You know? It is, and it's so, like, you feel like this is the time when they need their friends. They need to be in a group, Mm -hmm. too. Like, they need other people around them that they know and are familiar with and trust, and adults, too. Yeah. Like, having, um, like, their friends' parents be a big influence on their life. And, Mm -hmm. and, um, like, I know my son, my 16-year-old, has a boy, a friend of his, that he he wants to go to their house and have dinner with the parents. Yeah. And oftentimes I'll be like, you didn't come home on curfew. He's like, but I was with them. So right. yeah. I was with all parents. They're my yeah. other not family. Mine. Like, right. Yeah, that's okay. Right. I didn't want to be rude and get up from, th- she had made a pie and I was going to eat it. Like, <laughs> all right. But still there's a curfew. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's awesome. told he's her driving. before pie. Oh yeah. He's driving. See, that's yeah. the problem with moving here. This is the one thing I get mad about. <laughs> is it reduce the age of drive? Cause I always say your kids, you know, they're like, oh, you have them till you're 18. No, you have them till they drive. Yes. Mm-hmm. Moving here, that lowered the age oh a year. Gosh. So last night with Halloween, yeah. my 17, well, 16, nearly 17 now, um, went to one of her best friend's house. And with the parents, handed out candy, doing pumpkins, doing seeds, all, all the things. She calls me at 10. I told her 1030 curfew. She calls me. She's like, Mom, can I just sleep here? And she's like, I'll just come home in the morning and um, get ready for school because we live. I'm not going to say. Anyway, (laughs) she's like, so John said no. And I was like, what do you mean? But she's with the parents. I mean, they're doing absolutely nothing wrong. Yeah. And he was like, no. Well, now all of a sudden she thinks she can do anything in the world and (laughs) go. She doesn't ask. She just says. And I'm like, calm Uh, down. Calm down. And she's on the phone going, mommy, I'm coming home. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny. I swear on my way here, my husband and I had a similar argument. Like, just like he, my son has really great straight A's, like Mm -hmm. great grades, taking tough classes in football until eight o'clock, nine o'clock every night. Um, you know, just like doesn't party, wanted to go trick or treat instead of go to parties. Um, all of his friends come to our house, so I know them really well. He's not disappearing and stuff, but he's kind of doing the same thing where he's yeah. sort of like telling us, mm-hmm. I'm going here, yeah. see you later. And my husband's like, we got to stop this. We got to stop. We got to take away his phone and his car. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Like, at what point do you punish them when they're actually good kids? They're good, right. But, so, you know, you don't want to let them have, you know, but you got to let the leash go a it's little. True. And then, like, you know, yeah. you rein it back in when they kind of misbehave. But it's not really misbehave. Yeah. He didn't no, do his laundry. Right. Really good Mark kid. freaked out because he didn't do his laundry right. this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he did do his laundry. He put his regular clothes in with his dry fit in the dryer, and he's upset about that. So <laughs> my husband's a little anal when it comes to the laundry. I was about to say, uh, I didn't know you couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, well, he likes to separate them because these dry faster, and, you know, no we kidding. usually hang dry our, our dry okay. fit, just so you know. In case you, gotcha. In case you needed to know that. I thought the problem was that he put them in the dryer to begin with. Well, that's what normally – but Mark likes to separate them because then you can quick dry these, mm. and then – get the other w- yeah anyway mm. he mixed his laundry one-on-one on clothing. jamie and abby yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> learn yeah. something new every yeah. day you sure do yeah. <laughs> yeah that's tricky though when they can drive and like you're they're not under your control but yet like they're leaving in two years so you do have to let them like learn on their own but yeah i mean my kids are little so i can't speak to it and yet. he's a good dr- mm-hmm. he's a really good driver so it's yeah you guys have that in common with the little kids yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, oftentimes we'll get in like fights where we're all of a sudden we not fights but like we'll <laughs> disagree and we'll go Oh, wait, our kids are different. Like, Very yeah. different I'm yeah. seeing the big, hairy boys that are like, you know, want to, like, I'm talking to their door most of the time. She's I don't like, talk you're coddling them. them. I'm like, they're seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of I was like, I'm coddling them. Well, we got an argument about the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because the Jeffrey Dahmer, um, I didn't know anything about him. And then mm-hmm. I looked it up and I didn't realize it was like teenage boys. That were horrifying, right? But we were talking about like, what could the police have done differently than let the boy go back in Jeffrey Dahmer's control like when he was drunk? Like, should they take in um, intoxicated children? And I was like, well, I think anyone intoxicated maybe should go 
sit it out in the holding cell for a little while and before anything bad happens. And she was like, don't put my kids in a holding cell. And I was like, oh, you can put my kids in a holding cell. <laughs> <laughs> I realized, like, mine are big boys yeah, right. that need a little scare. And you're yeah. your itty, itty, itty bitty little cuties. No, I'm still thinking, like, no, they're fragile. <laughs> You'll break them. You want to pinch their little cheeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's say this. So you have three boys. And you have a boy and twin girls. Yes. And what are their ages again? Uh, Riker, my boy, just turned 10. Uh-huh. And my girls will have just turned seven. Seven. When years, yeah. yeah. And then, Melissa, how old are your boys? 16, 14, and 10. So okay. we have the 10-year-olds again. Gotcha. That's the that's oh, the, that's the connection. Mm-hmm. That's okay. the, gotcha. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the matchmaker. My oldest or youngest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have a long way to go to meet my ages. I know. Well, I was <laughs> seven, so I have a daughter that's seven and a son that's almost two. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. And I so have 13 and 17, 16. I keep saying yeah. 17. Her birthday's this month. That's yeah. why I keep saying it. <laughs> I know. So it's, it is. Well, yeah, it's actually, crazy. my son will be 17 January. Yeah. yeah. So he's a sophomore, a junior? He is a junior, yes. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, so okay. they are the same They are the grade. same age. Yeah. 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 And then it's my cool. eighth grader is actually, he's 14. He'll be 15. Um. He and the little one, um, we uh, repeated. I don't want to say held back. No, we repeated yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, last year. Okay. Kind of, kind my, of when we started yeah. here. And my repeated. little girl is eighth grade, 14 in January. So okay. Very common. Yeah. Very common. So let's go back to the podcast. How yeah. did y'all come up with this concept? Yeah. It really comes from like during COVID shutdown, my girlfriend's back in Connecticut. I was living in Tahoe, but my girlfriend's back in Connecticut. I have this massive group text of girls and everybody was constantly, what are you watching? What I need a new show. I need a new book. I need a podcast for a long drive. I'm doing, I need, I need, I need. So one friend was like, we call her spreadsheet. She was like, I'm going to start a spreadsheet. <laughs> Literally, we call her, sp- like, Everyone she had a, needs a she spreadsheet. She had a birthday yesterday, life. and we were like, happy birthday spreadsheet. Yeah, <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> we have some That's of those. That's you. Down. We happy. have those people. That is me. That is <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah. Your spreadsheet. <laughs> but, um, so she was like, I'll start a spreadsheet. And I was like, why don't I start an Instagram page? This would be fun. And so then I was like, well, I'll just find, like, you know, movie covers and book covers and whatnot to put on the Instagram page. And I'll finally have a pretty Instagram. Like, I don't have one of those pretty Instagram. Like, mine's not curated. It's not pretty it's real so life. I was like it was real life it's <laughs> dirty there's some dark pictures where I'm like that's the only picture I got of my kid I'm sorry I I so is that your stomach <laughs> get this girl a snack Mama's hungry. Here, Snickers. <laughs> you want a Snickers <laughs> oh, it, really satis- it really satisfies I <laughs> I'm not gonna eat it on camera but for later <laughs> Oh, so it, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so I started the Instagram page and, uh, and then I was like, people have always been asking me like, would you do a podcast? Would you like my agents, would you do a podcast? Would you do a podcast? And I was like, I mean, maybe what would I do? And I kept trying to think up things and they felt forced and whatnot. And then this kind of came up and I was like, I want to talk to people because so often you sit down and you talk about like, what are you watching? What are you, yeah. oh, have you watched the new House of Dragons? Have you watched the new Handmaid's Tale? Have you, you know, mm-hmm. did you check out this new show? Have you heard of this? And there's just so much content to weed through now. So I was like, let's do this. And then Amanda, um, her husband works in kind of like broadcasting and media, all yeah. different forms. So we were like, I was like, do you think Logan would do this? And she was like, yeah. And then I was like, and would you be my co-host? Aww, so, Cause I, I was like, that. we have such fun talking and yeah. we never run out of things to talk about. We were like, this could be we really don't. fun. That's awesome. Then and she designed the studio and yeah, I was going to ask if you, do you have a background in design? Cause I know you sort of, I went to art school and then fashion school and then weather school. Um, oh, she's a weather girl. If you guys, weather seriously, school? during the tornado watches here, she's the one who tells everyone who needs to hunker down. Yeah, so I started out in fine art, which was my passion. I love it. I'm crafty and creative, and I went to fashion school just to get my degree and be done because I was ready to be a mom and stay home and do those things. And a little while after my kids were in school, I was like, you know, I always really wanted to do weather, and I didn't think – I wasn't an academic person and I didn't think I had the math brain that was required, but Penn State has this online program. I was like, well, you know, I can't really tell my kids like you can do anything if I don't try and do something that I really want to do. So I went back and did weather. Oh, that's amazing. amazing. She's she's literally like our forecaster. She'll be like, guys, going to be a big storm. You know, <laughs> bring stuff in. Like, you know, you know, she's telling us all yeah. the different things going on. I need to introduce it's gonna you to my mother. It's going to be a beautiful day. We got to go for a walk. <laughs> Every day. Jamie, it's going to rain today. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like 
<laughs> John's really into weather too. So long, sto- <laughs> not a long story, but our old president used to be for the Titans used to be a major, major weather person. He <laughs> would send out mass emails and John still gets them to this day of if there's tornadoes coming. What? Or, so John's like, all right, Steve, what's happening today? That's a good thing weather? to know when you're running a football yeah. program though. <laughs> Especially with the open stadium, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. That's why they're going to put that dome on top or something. Well, we were out to dinner, and we were, like had a couple glasses of wine, and oh, then gosh. John texted and was like, all right, there's a storm coming. You guys need to come home. <laughs> That's so true. And we had to leave. And we both left. <laughs> we left because we obey you rules. Take it, you we take obey it. And it didn't <laughs> rain. <laughs> we oh we don't gosh. obey rules, but we do obey John. <laughs> we obey John. <laughs> John speaks. Yes, we, we do what he says. <laughs> the last one, I, I, I happen to be gone for the – since we've lived in Nashville, I've been gone for all the tornado. Anytime a siren's gone off, I've missed it, which thank God, because I think I would freak out. I literally, as a child, growing up in New York, for some reason, I had terrible nightmares about tornadoes. I was gone for the last one. I was in New York, and my husband sends me, I don't know if he was teasing me, or I don't know. He, he sent me the audio of just the sirens going off. And I was like, are you in my closet? Like, you better get in my closet. It's like the only safe place, the only place without a window. Like, you better get in my closet now. Bring some snacks. Bring a char- like, charge <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. And helmets. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. For the oh, kids. I didn't even think That's of that. Right. <laughs> I will make you a prepared nest kit. Okay, I need I'm that. Help, but that video. is like a new thing. I was like, That's helmets. so smart. I didn't even think mm. of that, but people do that. Oh, my gosh. But the, we yeah, have a so closet. I was like, and you have a closet. The helmets are hung in it. There's are you serious? Do you really? Oh, girl. Why didn't Doomsday. I know that we were? Yeah, I'm a doomsday prepper, but like not like that. That's <laughs> See, amazing. I'm not. I'm, I'm like tornado. All right, everybody, put your helmet on. Get in the closet. I'm more ready for the zombie apocalypse. Like I'm looking at neighbors. Like who has the chicken coop and who's, yes. who's got bees? I can take the honey and where's an apple tree I can pick from? You know. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Like you're. I didn't know you had the closet. Look at you. Oh. I mean, when you learn about weather, you yeah. learn about how devastating <laughs> it can be. Oh well, that god. reminds so. Um, football related um wesley Britt um was a was a pa- he played for alabama and then okay. he was a patriot and uh he married a, a really good friend of my husband's growing up um katie Britt, who's running for senate in alabama she they um they were in the middle of the tuscaloosa tornado years oh ago and that. their whole house collapsed on them he threw the kids in the bathtub <gasps> i think he put a mattress on his back and they all got in the bathtub and he the house collapsed on oh, them and he, he held it up on his back because he's a Offensive lineman. Yeah. And he, I mean, that house like fell on them and oh he saved God. his and family's life. Oh my yeah. gosh. Crazy, I just right? Got chills. That's scary. That's so totally scary. Totally crazy. That whole Tuscaloosa, all those yeah. tornadoes down there. I yeah. mean, my husband's high school in Enterprise, Alabama was destroyed many years ago. Yeah. It's, it's those, terrifying. I mean, so they, it does scare me, but it's like such a pinpoint. Yeah, but it and is, that is such a, well, in Tuscaloosa, you know you're going to get tornadoes. Like that's just geographically mm-hmm. how it works. And Nashville, we're not very prone to them. Murfreesboro has a geography that it is more prone, I would say, than. But we've had a downtown. couple really bad ones. We but had it took the one in East Nashville path, a couple years ago, r- didn't it? The one that yeah. tore through here. Yeah, and but I mean, we're talking like decades apart. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, to bring it back to a lighter note, um, <laughs> <laughs> since I'm from New York, the one thing I can't say, and one one of the few things I can't say in Nashville is Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro. <laughs> Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro. Oh my gosh, yeah. so funny. It Murf- is a weird word. Murf- it is Murfreesboro. Mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah. Anyways, we got here um, because of the <laughs> studio. <laughs> 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 Anyways, did I mention I'm ADHD? <laughs> <laughs> She thinks I am too, which might be you just one hundred percent. You are. That makes for a good podcast. <laughs> yeah. we just so the studio, it. yeah, that came out. Of, she sent me around a picture. She was like, "Can you make it look like this sort of?" And I was like, "Yes," but then I didn't. <laughs> no, you did. well, I, I bought the chair that you liked. You did colors of like, she <laughs> pulled color inspiration from like Clarissa Explains It All, my first show. And then we have a bookshelf that just holds like all my little knickknack things, mm-hmm. which I think it's we've got to change that up soon. I think yeah. that's enough. I think we're going to do a whole studio overhaul. Oh, see, she's just, see, ADHD. She's, she's like, we're excited. done with this. Throw it away. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> been, a, it's been four seasons. It's it has. Actually, four we've done 40, seasons? Yeah, we've done oh, 40 episodes. It was, that, it was that long. We've done a lot of yeah. episodes. That's so. fun. And then we're popping off a few extra. Like, we have enough for – we've just finished our fourth season, but we were kind of like – my little one, my 10-year-old is obsessed with Stranger Things. And I was like, I feel like he needs to come on and talk about Stranger that's Things. That's fun. Oh, that's yeah. cool. We're, but we're kind of like not sure if it's okay for a 10-year-old to talk about. How do you guys yeah, feel about that? Absolutely. That? Yeah? Uh, yeah. Like, I love it when passionate. my kids are involved with stuff. And especially with John's career. And um, I don't know. I'm always like, go for it. Yeah. You well, know? he's like, he's he's a little – it doesn't freak him out. It does freak him out a little bit, just like late at night if he gets a little emotional. But uh, but he loves Stranger Things mm-hmm. and he loves 
the the creativity of it. I mean, he was 11 for Halloween, and mm-hmm. I had to be Eddie, and but he also wanted to be Vecna, but that was, I don't know, putting a mask on him was, like, too simple. I wanted to do something more fun with the blood and the <laughs> transistors on his head, and so we I shaved his to head. to make him bloody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he was obsessed with the blood around his eyes and stuff, so. Um, he looked great, though. He's a little horror kid. I don't know what he to is. say. Like I think it's, it's cool. Creative yeah, juices. I would, I would do it. Anything they're sure. passionate about. I agree. Yeah. Fun. And he's excited about it because there was one day when I was we were going to the podcast studio. He goes, what are you going to do today, Mom? I was like, I'm going to the podcast studio. He goes, well, uh, well, what about me? I mean, are you even, uh-huh. you know, you told me I was going to be the Stranger Things expert. Like, what happened to that? So <laughs> yours, you do a week, yours are weekly, right? Yeah. So each season's 10 episodes? Yeah, we do about 10, but then sometimes we'll scatter in some specials. Like, okay. A Harry Potter or a Queen Elizabeth just died or mm-hmm. the Stranger Things one is a special one and like a Christmas one here and there. So one thing I lie. like a lot is that you kind of involve your audience. You know, you're like, OK, watch the first episode yeah. of this or like that's very different for a podcast. We I give feel them a little like. homework. Just yeah. I love it. But I think that's cool because you feel a part of yeah. it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I totally watched the first season of Clarissa today. Yeah. I haven't seen that. <laughs> and it's so good. Gosh, it's probably since up. the last time I saw it. It was, you know, oh my so gosh, I need to watch it. Well, it's finally back. The thing is, for all these years, what I mean, it's been like 30. Yeah. Thir- yeah, 30. Exactly 30 years. And I, well, more than 30 years. But it's now on Paramount Plus, mm-hmm. I think. And you just couldn't find it before because it wasn't put on DVD or v- right. at the time VHS. VHS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like a few episodes were released, but it was very hard to find. Every once in a while at a Comic-Con or something, I'll sign like a VHS of it. Or But oh, there were cute. only like maybe 10 episodes were put out, mm-hmm. but there were 65 or 66. So... Um, you know, they, they just, they were going to be gone until the streaming services came out and now they're able to be back That's awesome. So yeah, it's kind of cool. cool. And even Sabrina, Sabrina was tough because my mom and I produced the show and she, she made all the big decisions executive wise and she got big artists to be a part of that soundtrack. But in order to get the music for a cheap price, she, it could only be aired a few times on television. So once it went to like reruns too many times or it had to be put on, um, video, the music had to be all replaced, oh which gosh. is very expensive. Then they had to compose original music or find like uh-huh. cheap stock stuff and lay it in. So it took years. Our show ended in 2003 and it came out. That's when everyone was just starting to do like um, DVD sets. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they couldn't do a DVD set till like 2007 or something. Oh, wow. I never even thought about that. I know. That's I know. crazy. It's all that technology weird. changes, all your contracts wow. are set in like. Well, that's a thing, a different like, era. Yeah, when it airs on something like a streamer and you didn't sign a contract for that, like... Yeah, do you get paid? <laughs> um, <laughs> not for Clarissa, but... <gasps> that stinks. I wow. think for Sabrina. Yeah, for Sabrina, yeah. I haven't gotten paid on Clarissa a day since the last time I filmed there, which was the Stop. end of 1993. Oh. So, no, that show wow. was... I mean, it was a cable contract. Cable was brand new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was... Uh, it was Nickelodeon. It was Orlando, which yeah. was a, um, uh, uh, there were no child protection laws down there, which is why they opened the studio down there. Oh, that's like, crazy. Yeah. So, it was, oh. um, so there was a lot going on with that, with that contract and like just experimental kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden the show became a hit, cable <clears> became a thing and, you know, and, and we learned, but, yeah, <laughs> but learned. that was the kind of like, here's what you're going to get paid for this show. And then you're done. Whereas yeah. everything else is done in residuals and, and now video on demand, you know, all that um all different contracts it's gotten it's gotten sophisticated finally <laughs> yeah well and something i learned in researching is that your mom actually like found the archie comic sabrina and then like came up with that idea and yeah. i just thought like i think it's a story you have to tell because it, how cool and yeah. your mom's the awesome comics. and most people don't know that right my mom everyone always they just thinks she was like the original momager but she was actually an executive like she was a casting director she was a manager and then she was a casting director and then she was ha- trying to find something for me after Clarissa ended because she was managing my career, but she was seeing the things that were coming to me, the projects that were coming to me, and she didn't like the the choices I was getting. And so she, um, someone handed her a comic book on a playground and was like, this would be a great project for Melissa. And so they, um, she brought that to our contact at Viacom who was doing Clarissa, and uh, they were like, well, we'll sell this to Showtime as a movie. And so as we were shooting the movie in Vancouver, um, that was the one with Ryan Reynolds, our first Sabrina one, um, she the whole time was saying this would be a great series this would be a great series and people were like okay okay just give us the movie just get us the movie and so when she went in the editing room to edit the the movie she cut together a trailer for a series 
And then she brought it out to LA and pitched it to five networks and got three offers in the room, which like That's doesn't fantastic. happen. Yeah. And so yeah. then, and she, the whole time I remember her going, I'm going to LA. I'm going to go pitch this Sabrina series. I'm like, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you know? what, do we, what do we really know about the television industry? I mean, other than me auditioning. And she went out there and she got all these offers. And with ABC gave her not only an offer for 13 episodes, they gave her a time slot, which was TGIF. And she knew that the that was gold. Best. Yeah. So she was like, let's do that. So we moved to L.A. and we did a series for seven years. That's incredible. So Sabrina was on TGIF or Clarissa? Sab Sabrina. 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 Clarissa was already over at this point. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I was telling them, like, whenever I knew you were coming, I was like, I want to see the the dates and the timelines. Yeah. Because I, another thing, I was laughing at one of your podcasts whenever y'all were talking and you were saying, I just don't remember anything. <laughs> well, that's how I felt. <laughs> I felt almost guilty because I'm like... I know I watched uh, Clarissa, and I know I watched a little bit of Sabrina, but I don't remember anything. Yeah. And it was. It was like when Clarissa was right whenever I was graduating high school. And then after that, I was so worried about FIMU. I was, and and <laughs> I had a little black and white TV that didn't have cable. So, I, yeah. I, it was. No, yeah. that was, I mean, Clarissa was, was basically my high school. That's how I remember yeah. the years. Like, I graduated high school when Clarissa was over. And then Sabrina was basically my college years. Mm -hmm. It was, well, 20 to 27. And then 27 is when I got married. So, it was like. Oh, wow. Before marriage, after, you know, so then That's after crazy. marriage came Melissa and Joey. And uh -huh. then actually, that was after my second son was born. So I know that was like 2009. That's and then, That's awesome. And then No Good Nick was 2018, which I don't know why, but, I remember, but that date will probably always stay with me. Just a nice round number. 18's, yeah. 18 is a lucky number for me. So I always remember that. <laughs> Sabrina was so like one of my favorite shows growing up. And like that TGIF, it was like Full House. Oh, yeah. Sabrina, I don't know, Family Matters, yeah. something, yeah, yeah. you know, step I by forget. Step. Oh, step, step by step. step. I don't know if that was on, was that the same time I was about to sing New Kids on the yeah. Block. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that is <laughs> that New Kids on the Block song, song right? Step yeah. by step. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, baby. <laughs> baby. Gonna get to you, girl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We, so we could be a girl group. We could say. <laughs> so good. So good. It's so Throwing good. it out there. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So, do y'all have a favorite episode on on your podcast? I do. You do? Which one? This one, it, it might surprise you, actually. Wait, okay. have yours okay. first before she says. Oh. oh okay. Because that. It's hard because so many of them are my friends, guys. It's hard to pick. Well, okay. Um, I know but what you don't have say. to pick. I would say I loved Rita Marina. I knew I you were going to I am obsessed with this woman. <laughs> and I know she's 90 and that's not like. You know, it shouldn't be a really cool episode, but to see a woman it is this a vivacious episode, and this passionate about life and men and everything. And like, she's just a gem, like a national treasure. And I just, I can't get enough of talking to her. And, and I have to ask brain. who she is. Rita Moreno was, um, she's an EGOT. She won an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony, okay. Peabody, oh, wow. oh, Presidential wow. Medal of Freedom, or no, uh, um, Presidential Medal of Honor. No, presidential it's the um, Kennedy Center Honor, right? It's some presidential thingy. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but she, she, I mean, she's won numerous awards, but she was best known for West Side Story, dated oh, Marlon wow. Brando for 10 years, okay. tried to make him jealous with Elvis. It's, oh. I mean, just to ha talk to this woman, her stories are like old Hollywood. Wow. She did um, The Electric Company, which was probably before yes. time. Okay. It was, it was like a kid's company. show. Gotcha. It was yeah, like pre -nubbits. She loves her Electric Company days. Yeah. I mean, she's just, um, oh, wow. it's just amazing to talk to a 90 year old and just kind of, you know, get the not the wisdom that she had yeah. like mm -hmm. hear about it and her life and how she's just thrived and she another is one is actually wild. like another is one that I think is really fun is like Tim Mahoney from 311 that was a guitar okay. player mm -hmm. that's a fun one because it's someone we were like is you know he's a friend of mine and he's coming to town and he's willing to do it but he's kind of shy and he's mm -hmm. a guitar player that nobody really hears from from a band that's been around forever but like has a very specific fan base uh -huh. but he's just so fascinating and nobody ever hears from him and to get an hour with him mm -hmm. was kind of I exciting and fun and then and then the fan base came out for it man they yeah. loved it oh that's cool all right what's yours yeah. okay i have probably two favorites okay okay um the big show oh, paul yes. white oh yeah so funny oh my gosh he was amazing to have like a seven foot two guy talk about his cats and um ha handmaid's tale is is why i need to listen to that one it's so good he's so funny he it was just so unexpected he, i mean i knew him from wrestling my husband and yeah. son are really into that and so <laughs> i that's what i knew him from and i'd watched a sitcom so i expected this kind of big burly guy to come in and talk wrestling and now he sits down and he is 
like in this immaculately tailored outfit <laughs> and barely fits on our sofa barely fits in the studio <laughs> is he really seven two he's huge he's yeah yes. something yeah. like that i yeah. mean maybe he's not, a he's full foot taller than me ginormous yes Jeez. i was like um like i was like i looked like a baby on this set. <laughs> um so i i loved his episode go and definitely watch that one i you can listen to it but it doesn't have the same effect but he sh- he comes across as but very he, sophisticated I, and elegant. I and texted like, him. How? <laughs> I was like, "What do you want to talk about? Like, what are you binging?" He's like, "Oh, we got to talk about Handmaid's Tale." That's I'm like, funny. "Okay." But he's also really into Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. And he plays with like Vince Vaughn and like. So he was talking he's all about his D and D and like got very serious about it. And, and then his thirteen cats and we were he like, has what? thirteen cats, y'all. <laughs> are you wow. serious in the house? <laughs> they have their own room, they, from what I understand. Oh, <laughs> my yes. niece has a catio. Oh yeah, Same. this is she, a new thing. Yeah, she, th- my brother in law built her a patio for her cats. That's well, a good Wendy, idea. Wendy yeah. from the Goldberg, yeah. she has a catio. I think yeah. I just realized they just someone just built her a catio. That's yeah. amazing. You have a cat room, it's closet, a closet that holds their litter boxes. She's and their put food like bowls. a little door, <laughs> and they yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> this is the creative <laughs> side coming yeah. out. Right. Her house is like the inside of her brain. Like her, the inside of her brain is so fun, and like she's made her house that it's it's, it's weird. Oh, oh that's but cool. It's, it's great. I like it. Yeah. No, it's great. It's for me. Okay. What's your second? <laughs> okay, Kathy Lee. Oh, okay. oh I bet mostly that because my entire life I wanted to meet her. Uh-huh. Oh no, I have a third one too. Oh, <laughs> which one? Okay, Kathy Lee. Is she. Talk about, like, a woman who is confident mm-hmm. and entertaining. I bet she would be fun. If you ask Kathy it. Lee what her favorite yeah. anything, it is yeah. her. It's uh-huh. her. She loves her, her project. She loves her work. And, and her wine. And her wine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kathy <laughs> Lee, Jesus, and wine. And she's amazing like that. Like, she actually has that confidence and, and, and faith in her own, not only her faith, but, like, her. Her abilities. Her abilities. Mm-hmm. And, and she's so proud of the work she's done. And that's, like. That's mm-hmm. kind of a rare thing to That's see. Awesome. It was I think cool. it's funny that we both just chose like old, like an, uh, like a generation above mm-hmm. us, and a man that we didn't expect to be entertaining. And the third, <laughs> well, the third one is I introduced um, Melissa to emo music. We had on Chris Caraba from Dashboard Confessional, yeah, and she. I, I'm a huge fan, I and now I now I listen is. to it. All oh, the time. okay. Well, I'm gonna open a whole new world to you. <laughs> I have no idea. So I went through like a scene kid phase okay. in my teenage years. Some people. This is like an underground world of music I that I did not really. Have you ever I mean, heard, I heard of it? Of screamo music. No. I've heard of it, but I've okay. So that was a thing, and then along that same line was emo music, which was just deeply emotional, kind of not dark but simple. Uh-huh. Um, and it was just like really highly emotional. Sort lyrics. of like prettier, melodic, like prettier. What we used to call like industrial. Like what I like, I would kind of relate it a little bit to like maybe like a Nine Inch Nails with a nicer melodic sound. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like kind of less sort rock, of that more artistic, okay. very artistic, pulling at heartstrings and. So this and guy, emotions. Chris Caraba, is the lead singer of Dashboard Confessional, and again, one of those like. Pinch me moments. I don't know how I got this to happen. And Melissa agreed to it. And I, I like, had no idea. Oh I was like, all gosh. right, I guess we'll do that. She was freaking out. <laughs> and her husband. And people came running in the studio. We're like, so we're we're sitting there. And he's where you guys are. And uh-huh. there's a he's playing guitar and singing to us. And I am Dying. about to come oh out my of my chair. I cannot contain myself. Like, I. That's cool. I, uh, like, almost tears in my eyes. Oh, my I'm gosh. singing every word. And Melissa's like, I'm like touching me. the piano like, and trying not to. Okay? <laughs> Yeah, she's like freaking out. I'm trying to look at her, but like I'm kind of like like right in his face, and I'm like, actually, who was it that we had? Mark, Mark Martel. T- Mark Martel, who's uh, uh, the Queen. He does like all the Queen. Um, uh, he's basically like their tribute band that's like run by Queen, as he's like the Freddie Mercury sound. Like, okay, he yeah, sounds so he's just like famous for sounding like yes. them and oh. touring with being the Queen like Tests, tribute guy. Yeah, and so he was like. When he picked up his guitar, he's like, I've never had an audience this close before. <laughs> <laughs> we were like right there in his face. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just going to yeah. stare at you. You're like, I'll, I'll watch incredible your fingers though. so I'm not looking at your <laughs> eyes. Is that weird? Okay. So if I go home, on my way home, I get on Spotify. Dashboard mm. Confessional. Dash. Hands Down is the song you want to listen down. to. Wait, wait. Okay. What's the one from the Spider-Man soundtrack, though? That's the one I Vindicated. I, vindicated. I love that. I will listen to that song. I'll and be like, Alexa, play EMO? Vindicated on a loop. It's emo oh, music. Yeah. So EMO. EMO. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This okay. is a whole new uh-oh. world. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> Julie is laughing at us. 
John's going to be like, what are you listening to, I bet to, he Jamie? doesn't know. Julie, are you oh, not expecting yeah. me to go He'll there? He'll probably today. know the song Vindicated because of Spider-Man. Okay. Because okay. it was the soundtrack oh, to the he is a Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so what, what surprised you guys about, because we're... I feel like we are, there are a lot of similarities, yes. but like in being co-hosts and like, has it changed your friendship? And I kind of want to hear the nitty gritty. Well, it just, me- I mean, we just get to know each other on so many levels because of, we'll talk about music and we'll talk about movies and books and everything. Like we kind of go into all these different areas, which then lead to stories about our life. And I mean, we'll go for walks for hours. And yeah. We, we do this one path that's like six miles long, oh. and we'll just talk, and my feet are blistered, and <laughs> and then we get to the parking lot, and we'll spend another hour, and we'll be like, "Do you want to go to breakfast?" And we go to breakfast for an, like, we'll just spend <laughs> hours awesome. and hours together, and then we'll I go see to the pancakes podcast. after we walk six miles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we do, and we do. <laughs> Cinnamon that's roll, fun. anyone? Um, but yeah, no biscuits because we're in the south, of course. And gravy. <laughs> That's for my my uh, Nashville. We should go to breakfast after. This. I know we should. <laughs> I, I think I should call it my Nashville nineteen, like the weight I've put on Nashville by living 19. here. Nashville. I have <laughs> taught this girl how to eat. I so mean, love. That. I mean, I had no problem before, but <laughs> we do like enjoy our food. Freaking pimento cheese and the biscuits everywhere and the fried. Uh, I I mean fried pickles, fried uh, everything's uh, fried. Yeah, fried green tomatoes like. I can't with the fried chicken. I can't. Walking up here, there's Hattie B's downstairs. I was like, I smell it. I know it's 9 a.m., but I smell it, and I'm going to have to have some Hattie B's later. <laughs> there's always dinner. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, Another similarity dinner. between y'all and us is, so you're reality TV, TV. Your oh, yeah. books. That's us. I'm books. Well, she's oh, books. Well, I'm books. Your books? Well, she's, I'm both. I like reality TV. This girl will be like, I just okay. read uh, 350 pages in the last 30 minutes. I'm like, that's like 30 seconds a page. I literally timed myself the other day to see if I could do it. It took me a minute and 20 to get through a page, and I don't know what was on that page. <laughs> that's, that's, it. that's how I, I am. I don't do it on purpose. But, that's yeah, so she's she's the reader okay. and the reality. I do read. I love to read. Okay. I just don't get as much time as I want. Because yeah. this one's reality TV. She'll say, did you see this? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. I have no, no idea. I don't watch TV. Of Love is Bl- our new season of Love is Blind, and I oh. am so ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm more of a Bravoholic. So. I mean, I love Bravo, too, mm-hmm. but... I have no. I never. I, know. I, don't, I don't even know. know what channel Bravo is. Uh, me neither. <laughs> is that weird? I've I just never even heard of this. Yeah. Which series? house? Which housewives are you? Uh, well, I watch all of them, but I like Salt Lake City right uh, now. Oh, we need to introduce her. Have to you Candace. watched one, Melissa? <laughs> no, me neither. Uh, I had to to have Garcelle Bouvet on. I think I tried to watch one or two, and Mm-mm. I was so confused. I've never watched oh, yeah. one. I've never watched a Kardashian. Okay, now <gasps> now <I've> Kardashian. Never- <laughs> oh, that's where we draw the line. Before Kanye, before Kanye, I was watching Kardashian. Nothing. Oh no, but you got to watch the new one. The new one's good. I well, I just haven't had. I just it's Chloe not on my it's not on my radar. Heartbreaking. I know. Oh my god. Poor Chloe. Really? I love Chloe. She's oh. my favorite Kardashian. Well, see, I liked them. Mm-hmm. Here's the reason mm-hmm. I, I connect with it. I, okay. have, I feel like I have to come up with an excuse for this guilty <laughs> pleasure. But it's because they are a big group of sisters with one brother. And uh-huh. I, that's what I come from. I'm the oldest of eight. And there's seven sisters oh, wow. and one brother. And so it reminded me of that. They're, they sort of have this faith in this really tight family bond. But I think that the difference in their family and my family is once we all married, mm-hmm. that became our primary. Like, that yeah. became our mm-hmm. base. And they all clung to each other instead of going do you, you not think I mean? it's because it was a show um that too uh, <laughs> absolutely and their husbands and were horrible <laughs> yeah well yeah. i think that there they was made a some lot poor choices. Yeah. yeah but they didn't cling to their spouses in a way that i feel like would be a healthy relationship that's true yeah like i feel like that was a that and it's probably because of the show that they had to all be together more um but I feel like, yeah, they didn't prioritize in the room. Yeah. But anyway, that's my but I, I like <laughs> it overanalyzing the I'm Kardashian. one of three sisters, so I like watching their relationship and yeah. their fights and their, you know, you're like, okay, that. we're normal. We're <laughs> yeah. Not, but, you know, it is normal to fight. We're more normal, um, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I like no, but I I like it's funny. We were my husband and I were uh, doing some uh, uh, couples counseling the other day, and uh, when the counselor asked what we watched together, do we watch anything together? And he goes, well, she likes rape shows, and I went, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Oh my god! He goes, you know, because a Handmaid's Tale. I'm like, that's not. Well, slow down. That is Wait, not the classification. <laughs> I was like, that is not how you. No, I'm not. Oh my no, and I'm not even like true. I wouldn't even classify true crime. Literally, I'm like, I like high concept, fictional. Yeah. But maybe borderline. Post apocalyptic. Could happen. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like uh, like uh, dystopian. Like a futuri- dystopian, futuristic, maybe like slightly futuristic, like could be in our lifetime, sort of. Str- but I love beautiful 
um, scenery and camera work mm-hmm. and lighting and, and, and fantastic performances. But I was like, but I, I like all that, but funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you do. You do. Make funny. me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Handmaid's gets dark, but it, gets dark, it but is like, good. I, the concept is crazy. Not as much as like yeah. lifetime cr- true crime stuff, though, I feel like. Or the I Dahmer. Saw I saw maybe two episodes and I couldn't do- go anymore. Handmaid's? It, yeah. It was too much for That's me. That's where I live. Yeah. yeah. Tell me the story. Mm-hmm. I think it's amazing. Yeah. I will, I will receive I all it. the nuggets you want to give me, but I can't watch it. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You would mm-hmm. like, um, have you done Bad Sisters on oh, Apple Oh, no, TV? but I keep meaning to. So good. You would love it. Like Is Five Sisters, book? maybe. I don't read. I'm just kidding. I do. <laughs> I, I only read business <laughs> books, <laughs> though. I don't read, I don't read fiction. Um, but yeah, familiar. it's like Five Sisters that one of the brother-in-law sucks, and so they like maybe murder him. We don't know yet. He, yeah, he gets, he, I know he dies and then they're all suspects or something. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, it looks really good because it's, it's funny real, and dark. And right? it's Irish. Like they're in Ireland. So it reminds cool. me of, uh, oh, what's his name? Ricky Gervais show. Um, oh, yes. Um, where his wife passes. It, yeah, it's just yeah. like dark humor. Yes. It's funny though. Like it like that. makes you happy even though it's. Well, The Great is kind of like that. Like I love, oh, I love you seen The Great? Great? That's one of my all time oh, no, favorites. Seen that. Oh my it's gosh. It's so good. And Elle he, Fanning and Nicholas Holt yes. um, and so many people. I think uh, what's her name's in it? Um, who just played Margaret Thatcher? And, and there, it's just a fantastic cast. It's gorgeous costumes. It's ridiculously funny, and I love that it's based in like a historical fiction mm-hmm. because it's about Catherine the Great. So I love that. Like I feel like I'm getting a little bit of history <laughs> with my entertainment. <laughs> but it's not real. <laughs> it's dirty humor. No, it's not. But it follows along the guidelines. Like if you needed to know just a little bit about Catherine the Great and how she yeah. came to power. Wait, I think I did see this. It's, it's really so good. funny. I think I actually did see this. Oh, was it? Elle risk- Fanning. Was it risky? Oh, it's. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, Very I've seen risky. it. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. I got a little uncomfortable, too. No. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Well, it's all that British humor, too, where they use language that we're not necessarily yes. comfortable with. Like, you know, uh-huh. I don't know. Can we spell out words here? No, let's <laughs> not. Right. Let's just. <laughs> we, we know. We got them. You know. I you can know think the of, words. Can think of a few. Yeah. Um, Anything that starts with a C. Yes. Really, <laughs> all the private totally. parts that start with C. Just go with that. Well, so <laughs> back to sort of like your career, Melissa, how did you get into directing and producing and all that? Like, when did that happen? Well, Around the time of Sabrina, because we were basically at the helm of that show, um, and my mom did the business stuff and I was more involved creatively, um, I enjoyed the producing aspect because I wasn't an actor for hire. And I was able to have a real weighty say in what happens with my character. And that's really where I left it. Like with Sabrina, I left it with where my character lives. I didn't expand that to other people's characters or other storylines or general arcs of of where the seasons would go and whatnot. I left that to the writers because they knew what they were doing. And um, But my mom was in charge of, like, the casting, the music, the wardrobe, the editing. Um, and so she was and, – and the handlings, the day-to-day handlings with the network. Um, so – and what the, you know, requirements were for them and how to deal with all the sort of politics of it. So I got an education on the set of Sabrina as far as being a producer in a, in a more creative way. But also – kind of stayed hands off with that for the most part. But if I had something to say, people would listen, which was nice. Because all those other years, I mean, they'd listen maybe if I was like, I don't think my character would say that, then they would maybe shift things. But it didn't always get received well. And so it was with that that I started to learn, I don't want to go back to being the person that has to do what everyone tells me to. I like having a, a say. And uh, and then with directing, I guess I was just really, really bossy. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> You me? never. <laughs> nah. mm. But I, uh, I mean, it really goes back to Clarissa days too, where I there was so much down da- for some reason there was so much downtime on that set. I got really bored between takes, and I started messing around with all the equipment and talking to the crew and hanging, you know, because those are my friends. Like there were the two boys on the show with me, but I wasn't hanging out with them. <laughs> but I, I'd rather go hang out with the twenty-three-year-old guys at the lighting board. You know? <laughs> so I, was, I was hanging out with the lighting guys and the camera guys and the boom operators, and so. I was learning all the equipment and and just the language. The language of filmmaking is so it, it's so specific, and so being around all that and and picking all that up. But I'd also done a ton of Broadway, so I just had like this vast scope of of experience. And never went to film school. Now I wish I had, but at the time I was like, absolutely not. I've done this my whole life. I don't want to go. It's never too late. There hey, we I, go, I, weather I can woman. Say that did I not take a course last year? <laughs> I went back to school you last did. year. I went to screenwriting course because I was like, I have never. So I went to Belmont and took a course 
Kimberly Williams Paisley and I went and took a course on what? screenwriting. That's awesome. So it was really fun. And now I need to get back to that. But um, but I but I still don't understand. Like there's a lot I don't understand about camera lenses and lighting and that kind of thing, filters and whatnot. I mean, we're all learning a little bit from Instagram and TikTok, but mm-hmm. um, I want to go like really learn that stuff, especially now that I'm directing. So on the set of Sabrina. Uh, I had the opportunity to direct because my mom was like exec- executive producer. Mm-hmm. She was like, you know what? We're going to we're going to get you a DGA card and you're going to direct the next episode. So I just got thrown into the wolves and there's nothing better than directing. And it's funny because like Candace Cameron Bure and a bunch of other people, actually, even like Annie Potts have come to me and said, you know, I, I want to direct one. But what do I do? And I was like you'll do it and then you'll realize I should have been doing this my whole life and Candace mm-hmm. literally came to me and said that's exactly what happened like I should have been doing I I, I have been doing this my whole life just not officially and so uh you know it just sort of when you know the crew and you're in that safe space of like you know everyone's names you know everyone's jobs you know the positions you know the characters you've been there since the beginning there's no better place to start directing than your own show yeah <laughs> because you're just in a safe awesome. space <clears throat> yeah. and you can't mess it up because they won't let you mm-hmm. and um and so that's how I started to learn I was in front of the camera and behind the camera which was really difficult because I'm literally trying to set shots while I'm getting my makeup and hair done and trying to change an outfit and you know so it takes a little time and I couldn't watch the the scenes happen I can watch mm-hmm. the performances firsthand but I can't go back and look at what's going on on camera so I would uh, just have to trust each camera operator. Like, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? No? Okay, we need to take one more take, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of feel like I learned at a good time, too, because it was still, f- we were still rolling film. It wasn't tape. It wasn't this, like, these tiny little cameras and these tiny little cards. Mm. We could say things like, check the gate, which doesn't even exist anymore, which was like checking the, to look in the camera to make sure there's no dust in the film itself. We still say it sometimes as a joke, just saying, like, <coughs> make sure, check the card, make sure we got that on, you know, yeah. that we actually recorded it. There's just, I learned, like, old school technology and old school, um, like, language. Yeah. And so it was super fun. And so I just, I love directing. I got very few opportunities as a female and um, somebody in front of the camera to do that. It wasn't until I started building it into my own contracts. I said, I'll do that movie, but I'm going to direct the next one. Or that's great. Oh, that's awesome. That's that great. Thing. So then I started directing more and more. And about 2018 is when my directing career really kind of took off. And now now I have like four movies I'm supposed to direct this year. That's, so that's awesome. Yeah. So How it's, was it it's working really so closely with your mother? There have been tough times uh-huh. for sure because, it's you know, there's a little conflict of interest. But at the same time, who do you trust more than your mom? Right. Like, right. I know she's not somebody that's going to try to screw me over i know also that my mom is not one of those moms that wants what i like she's never pushed me into this because she wanted to do it right you know there's not that like living vicariously thing it's very much you know you've met her i mean she's she just wants the best for her daughter Mm -hmm. and you know and all of her kids and and she is just a supportive mom and she knows the business. I mean, she's getting to be to the point where I think she wants to retire because now she's sort of like, ah, you do it. You know, and I'm like, no, I don't know those people. You have to help me. <laughs> she but, wants to go gallivant and oh, see her She's grandkids. a world traveler, man. She's in Paris right now and she's, you know, she was at Oktoberfest and she's at this and she's at that. Like she literally travels the world and then comes around to do some movies here and there. But um, <laughs> she's fantastic and she's my role model. And, you know, but there have been tough years in there where, you know, you grow up and you realize your parents are flawed and that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. yeah. but honestly, when it, at the end of the day, who do you trust more than your right. mom? Yeah, so true. To look out for you totally. and, and have your back. Mm-hmm. And you can fight with them on makeup like two days later. And they do. <laughs> Nobody an fights later. better than them, honestly. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're so honest with each other. It's kind of crazy to watch. I'm like, oh, you talk to your mom like that? But yeah. she'll come right back at her and then... The next day, you're like, "Are y'all okay?" And they're like, "Yeah, we're." Oh fine. no, we don't. Nothing. We don't hold it. That's the thing. We, we like let it all like out. Last night, we're we're good. Yeah, yeah. I'll get cool. so mad at like on text too. I'm like, "Oh my god, I hate right now." And then I'm like, <laughs> "Love you. See you later." Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So you're directing four movies this year within yeah, the next year. Yeah, what hopefully, is, if they all work out, they're mm-hmm. all at different stages. Yeah. Do you so you travel and have to be away for a few yeah. months, or how, what know, does that look like? Well, it's so funny because we originally left L.A. because in, like, 2008 and nine, I worked in Atlanta and Baton Rouge and Vancouver. And, like, I had shot movies in Rome and Australia. And I was like, we don't need to be in L.A. Unless I'm doing a series in L.A., we don't need to be in L.A. There's no reason to be here. We're working everywhere else, so I might as well live where I want to live and then travel out for work. And as soon as we moved to Connecticut in 2009, I got the show... Melissa and Joey and ended up five <laughs> years in LA oh, <laughs> but we were I was traveling back and forth in the beginning then I had my third son and decided to take the family with me so that was tricky but um I just totally went 
ADD. I, what was the original question? <laughs> um, <laughs> just when you direct movies, like how how often do you have to be there? For oh, what's yeah. the length so, of time? I mean, the thing is I was directing a lot in L.A. the last few years, but then I've been trying to bring projects to Nashville. Yeah. I've worked with the Tennessee Film Commission and been scouting out locations, and we've shot two movies here so far. It doesn't look like any of the ones coming up will probably fit for Nashville. Mm -hmm. One calls for snow. One is going to be Canadian. Um, so it depends on where the tax credits are. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to bring better tax credits to Tennessee so I can work from home, yeah. which would be really nice. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it, like, as long as it's not Vancouver, I, like, yeah, I would love to do something in Atlanta. Forth. Yeah. Like, three-hour drive. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. shoot something. My sister-in-law is shooting something in Louisville right now. I'd love to do that. Like, yeah. Memphis. Like, let, I just want to be, like, within a three-hour drive yeah. of every, so I can just come home on the weekends. But at, on average, you're gone. Like, if you're doing a movie, you're gone for, like, two weeks to a month. It depends. If I'm acting in it, like, I did a movie called Dirty Little Secret last year for Lifetime. That was two weeks, so that was brilliant. That was oh, a perfect time perfect. to be away. But I do like, like, I have to say hashtag blessed like <laughs> I, I feel like I get the best of both worlds when I if I go away and I work I'm in a hotel room I it is all about I don't have to clean up anything I don't have to you know shift things around I can focus on work and if I'm in LA I can see friends I can go to meetings I can show up at red carpets mm -hmm. I can do all the things I need to do and then I come home and that's it I've done yeah. my thing mm -hmm. and I I am now home I am now here I you like I will go to every you know Cub Scout meeting and I'll be there for every game and practice and driving them to and from school and whatnot. So, you know, I, I feel like I get to be both full-time mom and full-time work. So yeah. it's so nice. kind of nice. Do yeah. people respect you as far as this is Melissa Nashville mom, not Melissa celebrity? I think so. That's I, good. I think, yeah, very much so. Um, I mean, your existence here is Nashville mom. Like, yeah. Our whole friend group, we're, we all. I'm either with like the football moms the of the high school age That's or good. the or Tucker, the lower yeah. school, we call it the lower school mm -hmm. group. And like, so we sort of have, I, 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 yeah, I mean, my friend groups are related to my kids basically. That's great. So in that way, yeah. it's like I just went right into that. That's good. She was right at the table with her hoodie and her scrunchie. <laughs> Came with all the, the rest of us. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how often are you going for big roles anymore? Um, I, I actually just auditioned for a big movie. I haven't auditioned in a really long time. There's a weird thing that happens when you have success in this industry, mm -hmm. but you're not Sandra Bullock, um, <laughs> where y you're, whether it's your representatives or the casting people, the people in LA, they of course pigeonhole you into, you know, kind of stereotype you into a certain role that they think you can play or thing you can pull off or thing you're known for. And that can both hurt and help. Like, I did just recently audition for a TV show where I would play the mom of a witch. So oh. that, you know, would obviously suit me, but it mm -hmm. feels a little too much like a reboot, but yeah. not being a reboot. Yeah. So, but the thing is also, I feel like sometimes representatives tell people, tell act, uh, casting directors, they're not going to read, you have to offer. Mm. And they're not often going to do that with someone they don't know for that role, you know. Mm -hmm. for So I also just recently auditioned for the, uh, like crazy annoying cruise director of a cruise ship. I so really like hope you get that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but those are like the first two auditions I've had in like a year. Really? Yeah. So um, most of the time I have to create my own opportunities. Like you get to a certain level of success where y if you don't create your own opportunities and you don't try yeah. to break out of the shell that you're already, even though I've played four different, three different title characters, four different TV shows, numerous movies and whatnot, I, I still have to kind of, break myself out and and find my own jobs mm -hmm. and create my own opportunities whether it's directing you know finding a great script and then finding a financier to come in and put it together as an independent or find a studio or I'm pitching a talk show like there's so many different um ways I try to throw everything against the wall but then I also feel scattered so yeah it's tough that's hard do you still get nervous oh yeah I actually really? was doing this audition the other day and I really didn't even really want the part and so I, I <laughs> When I was done, I went and talked to my husband. He's like, are you all right? I'm like, I am just vibrating. I just, just give me a second to like, calm down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, before we end, because it, it, we're getting late, we have to talk about Will of Fortune. Oh, and yeah. And what that was like. And I just I realized that was just over a year ago. Know. I can't believe it was that long. I want to know what your foundation, or not your foundation, the um, nonprofit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. nonprofit, like how did they respond to you winning it's a million dollars? It's based out of here dollars. too, which is, well, Memphis. Um, it's, it's Youth Villages, and I partnered with them because I started a kids clothing line a few years back called King of Hearts, 
And I wanted it to have a charitable aspect. So for every, I don't know what it was, 25 pairs of jeans people bought, we'd donate one to Youth Village or something like that, right? So we were kind of offsetting things with wanting to give back and donate. And I worked with a kind of a, a, um, a headhunter for charities. I worked with this woman who knew all the charities. And I said, this is what I want. It has to be children related. It has to be US based. It has to be, you know, mm-hmm. so I found Youth Villages. And I think as of today, they're in like 30 something states. Um, yeah. So they're still not across. They're uh-huh. still reaching for all 50 states. But um, they help children in every, they help families really in every aspect, whether it's um, children in uh, foster care, adoption, um, helping families stay together, uh, um, children that might be falling behind in certain ways. But mainly what the youth, what the section is that I did, I think it's uh, called uh, Life Set. Mm-hmm. And it's helping children that are aging out of the foster care system have oh, somewhere, yeah. have mm-hmm. something somewhere to go and rely on. Yeah. They don't have a family yeah. to go home for the holidays or to help them figure out how to navigate college or, you know, whether they should join the military or, you know, so Youth Villages really does that. And that's what the money that's I want. I won a million. Oh that's my gosh, insane. I can't even remember. One million forty thousand six hundred, something like that. Oh um, my god! For, That's awesome. Yeah. So oh it god. was it was the most ever one on Wheel of Fortune, which I didn't know until at, way after. That is crazy. really. I knew I it was the first that. celebrity million, and I think only the fourth million ever uh-huh. won on Wheel of Fortune. But it was the most ever, I believe. And then, the toughest secret you've ever kept. I know. I can't believe. Well, I sort of kept it, but like. <laughs> <laughs> I would like run my mouth to like a few people and then be like, no, don't tell anybody. And then a few months later, I tell a few because it had to wait six months. Oh gosh, oh, that was hard, oh. especially with the charity because yeah. they were like, I just kept saying, I'm gonna play for you guys, so everyone gets thirty thousand for their charity. So I knew they were getting thirty thousand. Yeah. But if I could get anything over that, I was like, wouldn't it be great to say I'm coming back with a hundred thousand dollars? <gasps> and then I was like, ooh, but let's aim a little higher. What do I? I really want four hundred thousand for them. <laughs> and then it ended up being a million forty thousand. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And when I called them, I said, um, let's just say it was epic. <gasps> That's all I could yeah. say. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what to say. But then when it got closer, I was like, I want to do a viewing with you guys. And they're like, oh, well, come good. out to Memphis and we'll do a viewing. But I would happen to be in LA working at the time. So I was like, all right, we'll do a, a live Instagram or whatever when it happens. And they had a huge party. And I mean, I think some of the wives of them were drunk and calling me going, <laughs> I can't believe it. This is amazing. Oh. And I was like, it was so cute. Um, that's and then really I got incredible. to go. I went to the headquarters here in Nashville and celebrated with some of the life set students. And we sat around the luncheon table and everyone explained their situation growing yeah. up and where they are now in life and that they helped them learn how to do taxes or um, pay that's off a, a car or yeah. buy a house. And like that's what life set does. And Youth Villages is really, really incredible. And uh, Steven Tyler works with them with his fund, Janie's Fund, which is mm-hmm. to get um, kids out of sex trafficking. So wow. a lot of important work they do, and I really support them in everything I, I, wow. I do. I love that. <laughs> That's, That's incredible. Really I know. And whenever I saw it, I was like, is it staged? Until I read that it, it it's the most. Did oh, yeah. Ever, no, and won. it's crazy because the whole time I'm like, did I actually do this? <laughs> did they give really me did. this? All one? that practice on your phone? I did. I practice on the app like a lot. Is it as fun as what it looks? It's intense. Is it? It happens so quick. Uh-huh. Those puzzles. I don't know if you like the first puzzle we did. And um, Lacey Chabert is a really good friend of mine. So it was tough to fight with her because she's a huge fan of that show. Her and her daughter watch it every day. But she is the sweetest thing. And her f- big mm-hmm. sister, Wendy, who passed away almost a year ago now, she was a really good friend of mine. And so Lacey is much younger than me. She's like your age, I yeah. think. And she grew up with my sister and went on a date with my brother. And so oh. I've known her family forever. And to know that they were big fans of the show, I was like, I can't. Like, I felt so good. She was the one that told me, she goes, this is a huge deal. You won a million dollars. I'm like, really? She's like, <laughs> no one's done that. I was like, what? <laughs> so she, I, I just adore her. And so it was hard for me to like Beat compete her. with her. Yeah. But that first puzzle, man, she got it like that. It said something about, it was a showbiz reference and it was lights camera action I so did not see it she went lights camera action I was like yeah (laughs) I mean it was probably 30 seconds and she solved it I'm done I'm never winning this yeah and you're like wondering (laughs) about the spin and you're waiting to see if you land on something but you're also trying to think about the letter you gotta pick and what the words so do you look here do you look here and then by the time because they're looking you know the other people are looking at the puzzle and I'm looking to see if I'm going bankrupt and you know (laughs) so it's like that's a lot. It's a lot. And they oh. the the wheel is very, very heavy. Uh-huh. But they do have a person there. I forget the name, but it's like a rules person that's like a game show watcher. They're like there to make sure nothing's rigged. Mm-hmm. They're there to make sure the wheel isn't weighted and there's no one oh. um, 
Nobody That's messes with any of the results and like things aren't switched and whatnot. So, um, yeah, because I was like That's the whole time I'm like, did they did I did I actually <laughs> yeah. wait a second? <laughs> Hold on. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, no, I mean, I had you to really pick did the, it. I had to pick the category. I had to. So they didn't really know what category I was going to pick. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, then unless they were watching me play the app and they know I like the foods app. The food, the food category best. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I just happened to pick like letters at the end that were my initials, strangely, I think because I picked an M and I think that's the reason why I got brand muffin. That's so good. I picked an M, which I, I don't usually pick an M when I'm playing the app. So <laughs> it was meant to happen to pick an M and there it was. And I, it helped me. So I don't think I could have solved it without it. It's a game show miracle. It is. <laughs> okay. One thing before we end is I thought I, we, I learned about it on your guys' podcast, but the Bible on the TV shows, I just think is so interesting. I had thought that too. Because yeah. you always wonder how do they keep track of everything? Yeah. Can you talk about it just for a second? Yeah. I, you know what's funny? I've never so it's not a Bible Bible people just yeah. so you know it's not like you know it's not yeah spirit spoken every show is supposed to have and nowadays especially because of streamers you're supposed to hand in like a first or second script and a Bible to know what the arc of the show is going to be and where the rules are and what the what the whole overlying kind of themes are going to be so like something on Sabrina would be like oh she was her 16th birthday is on I don't even know if this is right but I think it's on Halloween so it's her 16th birthday. She's a- addicted to pancakes. Like you keep track of uh-huh. all the things that have to, which they didn't put in the Bible in the beginning because I think she has pancakes on her 16th birthday. But um, but then weeks later we say that she's addicted to pancakes. And then we say that this, ha- so all these things are kind of kept in record. Um, and it's funny because I'll watch shows and I'll be like, mm, that didn't hold up. What did just- <laughs> yeah. Oh, Hocus Pocus 2 really bothered me because I think in Hocus Pocus 1 they said that um, Spoiler Satan, alert. yeah, sorry. <laughs> But not really. Oh, but like Satan, Satan was gave there. her. She goes when Satan handed her the book, right? When um, book came to uh, Winifred, and then in the second one, I was like waiting for Satan to hand her the book, but it's not. It was uh, the actress from um, from uh, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, yeah. the gorgeous, gorgeous actress, boss oh, lady. Oh, Hannah, what's her name? Yeah, Feather Sheet or uh, something. I don't know. Wad- Waddington. And maybe Waddington? S- oh, maybe totally since wrong. it was a second, they were like, uh, nothing. You know, it doesn't. Yeah, have to but be I was as like, I had just watched the first one, and the next night watched the second one. I was like, oh. <gasps> They lied about the Satan thing. But <laughs> anyway, so I just found it, unless she's Satan, who knows, maybe. Yeah. But I just, like, I like the that shows should keep to this certain, these rules and mm-hmm. these um, overlying arcs of storylines and characters. Totally. It's a lot to keep up with. It is. Well, I'm watching 24 right now for the first time ever, and I just finished Lost. It took all year to watch Lost. Yeah. But I tried like, to warn her. Oh, yeah. yeah Lost, Lost was yeah. disappointing. At the end. Should have ended oh, season four. Oh, no oh. idea. Oh. But... <laughs> <laughs> but like, but I feel like there they really could have used. I feel like they went off the Bible. Like mm-hmm. they didn't stick to their Bible. They moved off to you know, and they had these alternate realities happening. Which I don't think they had a Bible from the beginning. That probably would have helped. Maybe them. the first season. Maybe. But then they kind of like <laughs> threw it away or burned it. Maybe it got lost. It's probably know. harder too because we do binge. You know, like back to back to back seasons, and you that's not. That's not the shows. way they were written. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like true. you probably wouldn't remember that if you hadn't just seen the first season. Like That's, that's really true. true. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. However, like with something like 24, I don't know how people kept up with it because I'm watching it night after night, waiting week yeah. after week. I, I Right now I'm on episode like 18 of season one. I wouldn't remember. Well, you yeah. had like yeah. that, that two I did long watch that previously one. on. Mm-hmm. Previously that's on. Good. But I feel like I'm watching those and they're not that helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what I watch? Here's so... I don't know if this is what a lot of people do, but like something I do is with previously uh, previously on. If you if you see something that seems like it wasn't a big story point at the time, but they on, you know that that storyline mm-hmm. is oh totally gonna be there's mm-hmm. gonna be a piece there. So I always love watching that stuff for just like what's this episode gonna be focused on? <laughs> <laughs> Which characters or who's coming back or you know that kind of thing. That's why I like the ones for only murders. Oh yeah, because it's always like oh wait that was a thing. <gasps> oh and yeah. Then, well, I'm a little, I mean, you guys probably know if you've watched 24, but uh, they keep saying, um, he, he gives the little overview at the beginning. Instead of kind of previously on, he goes, he tells about the worst day of his life, the, the oh. 24 hours. But he says, even the people I'm working against, I can't trust. And they show a picture of Nina. And I'm like, I feel like at the end, she might come back and be the bad guy. But I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen that in so long. I haven't I, either. I, like, I have no idea. <laughs> I used to watch it in college yeah. with, when we were all hungover. We'd get, in <laughs> we'd get in bed and watch like eight hours of it. That'd be rough to watch hungover. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's a tough one. <laughs> the Kardashians, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 
right, but we're all right there with you, so. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Yes. We know you're busy, and we love your podcast. We have Forever thank Fans you. now. Oh, I really, really have enjoyed it. We so. appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. For being well, we hope we can have a good season for you guys next year. Yay. For this year. <laughs>